Hi Virgo, this is your homework family reading for August 1st through the 15th. I was making sure I had my little cheat sheet here in front of me. Telling me what's going on with astrology. You see that got well pretty quick. Sorry, I'm losing my voice a little bit. We come closer to the lion's gate, I expect that to happen. Um... Because there's a lot of communication issues going on pretty much for everybody as we're getting closer to the lion's gate. They're showing themselves, especially in the sense of the last, they say the 6th, 7th, 5th, 6th, and 7th, right before the lion's gate, which is on the 8th. A lot of energy is going to be surfacing, showing, your, showing you either where it's going right or where it's going wrong, giving you directions more or less according to what's going to be happening. Pay attention. <clears throat> Sorry, like I said, I'm losing my voice a little bit. This is for all sun, moon, rising, Venus, Virgo signs. Hair in my mouth. And there's definitely something going on. Spirit constantly keeps giving me... I When I hit the astrology, I have to look into the Aries because the sign of Aries, there's something definitely important going on with Aries or else it's Ram in general. The Ram energy or the Aries energy. Because every time I try to say your name, Virgo, Aries is what's coming out. And I started meditating and asking questions about this sign last night. So I, I procrastinated on making this video. Because I was being sent in so many different directions I couldn't really, really understand it. I mean, strange. Like, like I'm being given shoes, but they're not shoes, they're flip-flops. And then all of a sudden, like, like they're just tossed or thrown on the floor. And then you see, like, the feet. You know, weird stuff. Like, it's just not making much sense to me. It's, I'm being given steps, but you're going up the steps and there's a brick wall. Which would make me understand the goat, not the goat, the ram. You know, maybe butting your head, trying too hard to go this specific direction when maybe you have to change change directions and go a different direction. It's not meant to be exactly the way you think it's supposed to be. They keep sending me towards the 12th house to tell me to check out the 12th house. And for some of you, I know some of you are going to be taking, like, your children to the amusement parks or just somewhere. Taking your family somewhere because I'm seeing you, like... Walking and holding hands and going and visiting places, which, you know, could still be vacation season, you know, for some areas, which makes complete sense. But this is pretty much what I'm getting. Other than I am getting some people are definitely dealing with some grief and some sorrow. And definitely some heart chakra, because my heart is feeling like, like it's closed up some. Which is also going to be speaking to you about how you communicate your truths. <laughs> They're saying you need to listen to your spiritual urges, your spiritual, your uh, intuition, your spiritual intuition, and follow it. That um, it will definitely be helping you. They're saying you're going to be seeing situations within the community of some sort. Some things within the community around you. Unconsciousness. Stuff that you have that you're unconscious to, that you've been unaware of, you haven't been paying attention to, you haven't acknowledged, is going to be bringing itself up and making it show to the surface to you. So it's no longer going to be unconscious. Something is going to be brought up. And you're going to see this happen from within that community, and it will speak to your higher mind about the decisions or the directions that you need to be going, <coughs> which will also be bringing you. More liberty. More self-realization. Is that it? I will definitely be bringing you growth, but changes within your life as well. But you're going to be bringing, this is going to be bringing itself, 
you're going to be coming to this realization of yourself by stuff you're noticing of other people. It may be stuff that you don't like. It may be stuff of where you're wanting to go in a different direction. But something about these other people are definitely bringing itself to the surface, making yourself come to a different level of surfacing. All I know is that's what I got. Um, let me pull up the astrology here. Yeah, I was doing other limb dreams last night and had to pull up another week, and I was making sure I was in the right time for you. Okay, you have the Lion's Gate, obviously, which is on the 8th, on August 8th. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Even I have my own chakras and stuff that are coming to open, or coming through the unblockages. I'm trying to flush them out, obviously, as we're coming closer to this Lion's Gate. Um, you have the Lion's Gate, which takes, pl takes place on August 8th. Now, that's going to take place in Sagittarius. It moves into Sagittarius, I think, like 4.30 in the afternoon, which will change its energy come midday, or, you know, halfway through the day. Prior to that, though, and the reason I'm going more after the energies before the Lion's Gate than the Lion's Gate is because everything I look at when I look at the astrology is just saying the everything those two, three days prior to the Lion's Gate is going to be setting you up for that ascension of what you'll receive if you've paid attention to the details and you've been really, truly honest with soul and with self about what you've learned those two, three days before. Because the Lion's Gate, prior to it, or the morning of the Lion's Gate, the 6th, 7th, and the 8th, the morning of the Lion's Gate, the moon will be in Scorpio, which means it's going to be incredibly intense, incredibly sensitive. Um, anytime the moon is in Scorpio, we feel everything to a brand new level, a higher, heightened level. If you're in love, it's brand new, and it's yay, and it's so great, the best thing that's ever happened. And if somebody just betrayed you, you're... I mean, you feel everything to the nines. So, whatever emotions are being brought up or being brought to you those few days before the Lion's Gate are there to either show you where you're going in the right direction or where you're going in the wrong direction. And remember, we have a free will choice to what it is we choose. Emotions will take you in any direction. Emotions and feelings are simply that. There is no right or wrong to them. How we act as human beings is right or wrong. And we have to be responsible to the choices we make about how we act upon our feelings. <clears throat> Meaning you can be assertive without being aggressive. You know, you can put your foot down, but that doesn't mean that you have to be out there fighting, literally. There's, you know, literally hurting another human being. You can still fight the good fight without having to raise a hand. It all depends on how you carry yourself, is what I'm trying to say. Now, on the 6th, there is, it's not exactly... Uh, T-square, but it's very close. It's got Uranus, which is in the universal second house, speaking to our self-worth, our self-value, our self-esteem, fighting the moon, which is very close to Pallas, which is also in Libra, <coughs> which is sitting on top of Haumea. So this would be our unconscious, unconscious depths of ourself, our emotional depths of ourself, in Scorpio, of that universal eighth house relationships and what they're responsible for versus the relationships with Libra, harmony and balance, and what is strategically thinking about where you are on the lotus flower. I mean, are you still going through the muddy, murky water? Are you going, coming up and rising out of where you can't see through the shit? Are you starting to, you know, come into that frothy middle but you know the light's there, you just haven't found it yet, you haven't quite reached far enough up, or are you starting to bloom? And where are you in this position within these relationships? 
strategically placing the right people in these relationships and what are the responsibilities to these relationships joint efforts joint finances joint resources are they bringing in a healthy transformational healing into your life or not coming right back over asking you what your self-worth your self-value your self-esteem is it coming through in these areas do you have independence, individuality, uniqueness, freedom in these areas? And then it's coming down and it's speaking to it's speaking to Mercury, which is in Cancer, next to the North Node and the Sirius Star, about what is your inner emotional security, your true self, the roots of who and what you are. And then it's going over to the fifth house and also speaking to the pursuit and pleasure. And are you happy? And why aren't you happy? Are you able to enjoy life? Your creativity, is it coming out? The pursuit of pleasure speaks to us about what we enjoy. Um, our, it speaks to us about our lovers, our personal, our personal interests, our hobbies, our sports, dating. And even it speaks to you about sex. It's what do you enjoy in life and how do you enjoy it? And are you free to express it? Are you free to do it? And... If you're happy, then you're getting closer to that inner emotional security. So are these relationships allowing you to bring up your own emotional truths? Are they allowing you to be who you truly are? Are you allowed to have personal self-value, self-esteem in these relationships? Are you having it? And are these relationships actually joint? Are they even? Are they fair? Or are they st not necessarily supporting you and your self-worth, your self-value, your self-esteem, and just what you value in the in, in your life? Because if, you, if they don't, they're going to be showing themselves in the ways that make sure it's clear of where they don't value you. Okay? And like I said, you're going to be acknowledging this energy. Oh, oh wait. You're going to be acknowledging that energy as well as the unconscious depths of these relationships. How, how true, how fake are they? Is this a relationship you want to be married to, more or less? That's where this is at. I said that this year was going to get into relationships. This is going to be dealing with your reputation and your prestige in some areas, is what Spirit is saying. <clears throat> They are definitely going to be bringing itself up to you about what what and who needs to be there and what and who needs to not be there. According to how much they value you, how much you value your own self-worth, self-value, and self-esteem, and does it support you. Definitely is going to be showing itself right here around the Lionsgate. Then you have, on the 11th, you have Mercury, which is moving back into Leo. It will be direct at this time, but it still will technically be in shadow. Because it's got to return back to where it was when it went retrograde. Now, on the 11th, like I said, it comes out of Cancer. It goes back into Leo. Technically still in shadow. So it's still dealing with darker aspects of our communication. Jupiter, on the 11th, is going to go direct. Uranus, on the 11th, is going to go retrograde. So you have all three of them just going like this, just moving. Okay, and that day is going to be incredibly sensitive, especially for all the empaths and sensitive people, because it's just going to be f flipping directions on you in general. I mean, it's going to definitely be emotional that day. You're going to be your your sensitivity is going to be off the chart. Then you're going to have the full moon, which is going to take place on the 15th, going from Aquarius into Pisces. So on a universal level, that full moon is taking us into our 12th house to see what we haven't gotten right so that we know what we have to release surrender and let go so this energy is bringing us full circle in that area You do have this whole um, serious star energy. The Lion's Gate energy is still not getting along with Cancer and Capricorn. Um, the North Star, the the North Star is with the the North Star, not North Star. That's why it's it's the 
serious star. The serious star is with the North Node in Cancer. And like I said, you're going to be still having Mercury in this energy at this time. The serious star speaks to us of God's consciousness. It is Thor's hammer. It is the enlightened teacher speaking with the North Node about what you've got to get right in order to move on. And Cancer is speaking all about nurturing the situation, nurturing yourself and your own needs and the people that are in your life properly, very nesting in it and nurturing it and making sure that it's very healthy and supported as it moves forward. And the Capricorn energy is straight across the sky with the South Node speaking about what you've gotten really good at, but it doesn't serve you anymore. So it's the rules, the laws, the boundaries. It's setting new limitations, shifting them and changing them, finding a spiritual and a soulful death and rebirth. So this isn't just a regeneration. It's also... Um, it's a reincarnation, or at least the beginning of a reincarnation for yourself. And this is very feminine and masculine energies that are not getting along. Mommy, daddy issues, you know, parent issues. It is also spousal issues. It is also just, you know, sp it's spousal energies. Female, male energies, feminine and masculine energies are not surfacing well. They are fighting. And that's because they're learning how they're having to learn how to make a new balance. Something isn't balanced quite right, and so we're learning how to have to shift that, and it's showing itself. Plus, it's masculine and feminine versus creativity and action is definitely what's coming in at this time. But remember, all this energy is also being placed by the Lion's Gate you know, the lion, in general, Leo, which is reminding us, we have the sun here, we have Venus here, we have Mars here, we're going to have Mercury here, we're going to have, and we have Yura there, which is talking to us about our sensitivity, which is talking to us about, you know, our sensitivity in the sun. Don't forget, you also have two of the guardians of the pole there, which are illuminated, speaking to you also about, like, Saturn energy, because sa those guardians of the pole carry Saturn energy, the sun, and Venus. So you're triple illuminated in that fifth house universally, unless you know exactly where that is for you in your own charts. You're triple illuminated in that universal fifth house of sensitivity, of what works, what doesn't, why it makes you happy, why it doesn't. Venus does not talk to you about love. Venus talks to you about senses, your, <clears throat> how you feel about it, your senses, your emotional, spiritual, physical, and your emotional, mental, and spiritual senses, your, how you see things, how you view things, how you hear them, how you touch them, this is all about Venus's energy, what it feels like for the senses to speak, and whether it's good or bad, she's going to let you know, because you're going to feel incredibly great, or you're going to feel incredibly bad because of what Venus is telling you. Being triple illuminated in those senses, triple illuminated in illumination because of the sun and the core energy being there, as well as ego. Being triple illuminated, you know, with those two are bringing it in incredibly powerful to make you see what makes you happy and what doesn't and why is it making you happy? And why isn't it? And are you able to get to be able to do those things that make you happy? And why aren't you? A lot of this has to do with everybody's routines. People are having routines all over the board that is making them do things. I wouldn't say badly. I would say a lot of our routines are routines we've created originally because we were doing it out of love for ourselves or our others. And we met for them to be well, but in the long run, the best way I could put it is like, say that you, you're just a loving person, you're a helpful person, and so let me help you with this, and then I'm going to help you with that, and then, oh, I've got to do this today, and I have to do this today, and I have to do this today, wait a minute, something else happened, i got to help this person, and i got to do this, and i got to do that, and before you know the 24 hours are up, and the things you really wanted to get to have been pushed back. Are the things that are important to you being pushed back because you're doing other things for everybody else? doesn't mean you shouldn't do things for everybody else. It doesn't mean you shouldn't love people. It says that you've got to make sure to keep your balance if you aren't finding joy in life. If you aren't finding joy in life because you're being so supportive of everybody else, well, where's the support coming for yourself? 
This is saying you've got to remember to keep your balance happy. You've got to keep your supportive energy happy of finding the things that you enjoy and what makes you happy and brings pleasure into your life. Because if you aren't happy, you can't get right with yourself to find your true authentic self, nor can you bring up that emotional security, inner emotional security, because you can't find it because you're not happy. Okay, I mean, this is what a lot of this energy is really speaking to us of. No matter how many ways I read it, this is what it's going on, on and on and on about, over and over and over. About making sure you have the right people in your life, the right relationships in your life, cutting cords. I feel like that's exactly what a lot of this is. We're told to look for you at Aries Energy. Seven is, <laughs> so for you, that's the seventh house. Aries is what I was told by Spirit to look at for you. It's very important for this, too, because that is your seventh house. That is your relationship house. You have Chiron in here. Chiron is going, already in retrograde, Chiron is going, let me take a few steps back, and where did I not quite get this right? So I could set these new boundaries, these new situations, these new cycles up in healthy ways. So who slept through in these relationships that shouldn't be here? Okay, straight across from it is Libra, which is in your second house of self-worth, self-value, self-esteem. And it is speaking to uh, Haumea, which is your collective consciousness. Your collective consciousness already knows who should be there, who shouldn't be there. Why they should be there, why they shouldn't be there. Do they support you, do they not? Are they healthy for the relationship that you want to have with yourself and where it's going? Okay? It's also got Eris in the sign on the opposite side of Chiron. And it is speaking straight across the sky with Libra, again, with Haumea, no, with Make Make and with Palace. So it's strategically thinking about where you are on the lotus flower. Have you are you starting to come up through the muddy murky dirt? Are you starting to come into at least the frothy new breath, being able to start to reach towards the illuminating light? Or are you stuck under the water and you can't breathe? You can't find your way? Or are you finally starting to actually bloom? How are you strategically going to help yourself get to that bloom? Which you're standing straight across in Aries from Medusa, which is Aries. Trouble, toil, strife, and speaking to you about the injustice that you've been served in the past within these relationships. So this is about rising above. Rising above, but knowing what you can do. That's what the flip-flops are. You're not being grounded well enough, and... You don't have on your, you might, you're, you might not have, you not be grounded enough, but you're, because the flip-flops being, you know, for me, you know, being barefoot, you know, being able to be grounded in where it is. But I feel like they're saying you've got the wrong shoes on. And I don't want to say that you should be walking away, but you should be definitely making the decisions. Like I said, I keep seeing the children going places, holding one of the parents' hands, and I'm only saying them hold one of the parents' hands. You know, so whether it's going on vacations and walking away, or it's actually walking away. Um, in some cases, I feel like this might be actually speaking of walking away. Like I said, some of these energies I've been shown was you walking up the steps to a brick wall. Are these the right relationships or is it time to walk away? Is really what I feel like I'm getting here. You know if you're locking horns with a ram and you're not going to get anywhere. Period. You already know if you're locking horns because this is what Spirit's directing me to was Aries sign. <coughs> you got Chiron here trying to tell you where things aren't quite right and how to change them and make them right. You've got Eris there picking on the trouble, toil, strife, and the injustice, speaking directly across to the actual self-worth, self-value, self-esteem, is your self-worth, your self-value, your self-esteem, is what you value in life and of yourself in jeopardy in these relationships. Because if they are, then the relationships need to end. It's that simple. Um, if not then you know that you want to stick with the ones that are definitely supporting you. Because that's what this is about right now. Getting to the support of our inner emotional security. And a lot of this is relationships that's been coming up from anywhere from 
you know, from like seven to eight years to 12 years and even like 33 years. Some of this is just, you know, some really deep residual past energies that are coming up. That's because there is major shifts going to be taking place for the rest of the year. Some of you, like I said, some of you are having feminine issues because I'm being called to the past life, past life deck. The only time I take the past life deck out is because, I mean, the only reason I'm pulling the past life deck out is because something about these other cards back here is not going to explain what they needed to explain. Or at least they know I'm not going to get it right. So, this could be having actual mother issues. You are having the Sirius star illuminate with the North Node this month, and you do have communication still here in shadow at this time in that Cancer area. So... Where is that exactly for you? That's the 11th house. Speaking about the community as well. So, this could be feminine energy ex that you're having issues with. That ha there's a blockage and there's a problem with. Or this could be actual mother itch issues. If it's feminine issues, it's speaking to getting connected to your creativity. And are you able to truly connect to your creativity and find that authentic self and bring that creativity up and out of you? Or is this a feminine issue and like a mother problem? Some of you may be having. Is there anything else from this deck? Look, the very thing I pulled to is father. So this could be inner energy of of action versus creativity. Action versus creativity. Um, lessons and blessings. That's what a lot of this energy is in general, is learning from our mistakes and moving forward. Masculine and feminine energies, because they're in opposition during this lion's gate with that serious star. And the serious star, like I said, is God's consciousness. It is the enlightened teacher. Having trust and faith, but I believe this is more of having trust and faith in yourself. Having trust and faith in yourself and acknowledging that you can be who you want to be. And that if you trust in who you really are, that you will land on your feet, that you will come in the right direction. That you that that the threefold will be in your favor. I feel like a lot of you are having trust issues. You're trying to place trust issues outwardly when you need to be putting... I think you're trying to place trust on people is what I'm feeling. You're trying to put place trust on people and situations outwardly, but what you really need to be doing is trusting what you truthfully want, what you truthfully desire, and know that your angels are there to help you. Um... I can't do that one. I don't understand what you're going to mean by it in a in this kind of a reading. So, find another way. Please. There was another card. Well, that was not acceptable. That came. And I won't pull the ones that are dealing with... with uh, what was I just saying? This is finding balance within yourself. This is male. This is finding balance within yourself. Maybe balance within the relationship. Is there actually balance within the relationship? Are you equally balanced? Is there, you know, is that joint finances, joint resources, joint everything? Is it down the middle, or is one more important than the other? Is one more powerful than the other? This could also be dealing with. Um, Issues, like I said, of yourself, of coming to both sides of yourself, your creativity versus your action. And are you balanced within this? Are you truthfully balanced in listening to both sides of your feminine and masculine energy? Or, this is asking you, are you, just like the picture is, are you both looking different directions? Are you both going after different things at this time in life? Are you both not on the same page? Because that may be important at this time. Now I can understand. Because they gave me originally, this is um, scribe and writer. Only you write your own story. 
Only you write your own story. Whether it's a past life situation that you're dealing with or not, only you hold the scrolls to your life. Only you write your story. So you have to be responsible for your actions as to where you take your story. And like I was saying, it was coming up originally with that uh, trust and hope. If, if you trust in yourself, you believe in yourself, then you will take yourself where you need to be. Because you're listening to your higher self. You're listening to your inner soul. Don't worry about making the right decisions. Worry about making the decisions that soulfully fit in your life. Is what this is after right now. <clears throat> because this is some deep energy. Some deep work right now we're going through. And this is about trusting the higher self. Trusting the soul. Trusting the intuition. And knowing that it's going to lead you where you need to go. If you overthink it, you may miss the proper opportunities because you're trying to talk yourself through it. The only thing you need to be talking yourself through is are you getting your self-worth? Is your self-worth, your self-value, and your self-esteem? Is it there? Are you able to connect to it? Is life valuable? And what is valuable and what's not? And from there, make the decisions. Because if it's not valuable in your life, why is it still there? Okay. That one came out next. Okay, some of you are definitely sitting on a broken heart. Because... I've got the Three of Swords and the Hanged Man. Some of you are sitting still because you don't know what to do. You're emotionally still connected to this broken heart. You're still trying to figure out where to take the situation. Which isn't a good thing, but it isn't a bad thing. Because it's coming with the Hanged Man. This is helping you realize why your heart's broken. Where it didn't work. Where the sabotage has been. Why you've been stabbed in the back. And helping you come to a new level of your own self. Your self-value. Your self-esteem. A new spiritual and soulful level of what you truly want and desire and need in life. And where that will, where that va those values are going to take you. This is telling you to 